are the problems today? It's always the question. I think, I think we're good. We have a blazer, so that's very good. We have full blazer minus the windshield, so technically not full, but something that you would call full in a lot of cases. We got a lot of windows to tint on this. And we got a microphone that's probably going to get in the way. That? Did that fix that? Maybe. What's up, dudes? You guys ready to work? Or watch some work? We have good coffee. It's a little, a little strong on the mocha side, though. I got to this point, and I didn't have to do a million things because we already streamed yesterday. So I'm a little bit like, are we really? Are we really pretty good? Buffering. No, we should be good. Hell yeah. What do you think about Solar Guard? Um, I always wonder why they have thin films. They're, from what I understand, they're a good company. They're a big company. They're owned by St. Gobain, which is a giant glass company. But... I always wondered why, like, they have a couple one and a half mil films, but the majority of their films were like one mil. It was like tissue paper. I always wondered why. Your motivations for me, I, oh, your motivation for me, I've watched all your videos, bought some of your products. Oh, cool. Very cool. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Don't start with film questions. <laughs> Is that too early of a question? Is that something for later on? The people that get here quick, it's, it's a slow start. Oh, shoot. I just remembered. That's what I forgot. I was so focused on, I was so focused on limo, I got to grab a 20% roll because we got to do the back in 20 and the front doors in five. <laughs> get you in a mood. <laughs> I'm only two years in, but I still learn a ton from this channel. Thanks, man. Hello from Argentina. Translate, please. <laughs> Not something I could do. Subtitles. Sometimes the auto subtitles are actually really good. Google's been, like, scary good about that. At one point, you had to manually put all your subtitles in. I just never did. And then... Uh, with their voice recognition, they developed that with like Google Home products and stuff. And then, yeah, they took over. More coffee? Oh yeah, always coffee. It's a bad day. If I don't have, if I don't have coffee, it's a bad day. I can get through, but it's like if I gotta work and I just don't have my coffee in the morning. It's just, it's sad. Oh, shit. That's what we forgot. Thank you. Um, on Facebook, it says uh, 350Z. It's because we did not update. I don't know if it'll let me at this point. I forgot to update the titles. That's what I forgot to do. But I don't, I don't know if at this point it'll let me. I probably could modify it on Facebook. But Facebook titles don't really matter. YouTube is the one that matters, and that one's different. Aha! It's always something. But as long as the somethings are becoming very small... That makes, that makes 
it better. Edit post. Thanks for all your tips and videos you've uploaded. I was able to do a decent job tinting my Camry. Oh, sweet, man. That's awesome. Okay, so there's one. Title. Save. Okay. And then what's the next most important thing? The group? How do I get to the group? There's the groups. Edit post. I'm actually tinning a Chevy Silverado 2500. I tin with Lexan, stayed on for about a year. I'm switching it with Express Window Films. They're awesome. Oh, that's good to hear. What is the reason to change it is my question to you. I have an idea, but I'm just curious. Love your channel. Thanks, man. A lot of nice people this morning. What's a quick tip to bottom loading? Uh, learn how to take everything apart, because that's the challenge. Bottom loading is really easy. So, like, it takes out a lot of the headache of installation for tent. So if you're really handy with taking shit apart or you just like doing it better, I don't fault people for doing it. Um, there's certain circumstances where it would be really beneficial. Like I had a Lexus, uh, a 2021 Lexus on ES, ES series or something like that. I had that on Tuesday. And those front doors, those front doors were not going to turn out well without it. But the seals pop back, uh, or the, the panel pop back, seals pulled out. I had a, like a 10 year, 10 year old Lexus um, that I tried doing the same thing with. You, we had to, we got the seals out, but to put them back in, what everybody failed to mention was that you have to take the door panel apart to put the seals back in. Like, bro, come on. <laughs> Clarity, there was a haze. Kind of why I switch, very dangerous. Actually, you notice uh, with that in your videos, Express Films are really so clear. Ba boom! That is what I want to hear. First hand experience, somebody that used it that noticed haze, and it can, it can be dangerous at certain times of the day. I 100% agree. And to me, saving a bit of money on film versus that, yeah, it's, good job, I'm proud of you, <laughs> like, I, I don't even, even a cheap dyed film, like, it's gonna, it's gonna look more clear, which is just funny, <laughs> the swoosh is looking hot today, Zoof. It hit the glasses, and it's off to the races now. We need a haircut. It's just funny how it gets cut, and then it's like, it's coming back. Don't worry, it'll be back. And here it is. I've seen Tinder slide the film right into the seals without removing it. Not sure if you've done that. Um, so you can... Like, so there's some, there's some clever little tools out there that help you pull the seal back. Um, this goes for, like, I've seen something with, like, a bungee cord thing that you step on, something that you put your arms on, um, and, you know, just a, a mess of other little tools. So those would be kind of like a nice in-between where you don't have to take anything off, and it'll still make it... It'll, it's not going to be quite as easy as having the seals out, but it will be, you can still make it happen. Um, there are going to be panels that that's not going to work for, though. When you get into really tight seals, like, I don't know, like Audis, VWs, some stuff like that, you're really not going to be able to do that. That's a lot of, like, more um, domestic vehicles, trucks, SUVs that just have looser tolerances, you could do you could do a lot of those. So while it's going to help you on some, those 
the ones I think that it's really going to help you on aren't necessarily that hard to tuck anyways, but depends on where you're coming from. That's cheap, it's crazy. What happens when, oh, that's written a little weird. When you use cheap film. Yeah, yeah, I, I get what you mean. When you use cheaper film, like, especially when you go into, like, cheaper carbons, cheaper ceramics, there's things that make them not as good as the more expensive ones. So they have to particleize carbon, ceramic, really, really small, and they just don't do it when it's that cheap. Maybe eventually it'll get there where it's better, but there's always reasons why it's going to fail. I mean, at this point, there's still cheap dyed films that don't last forever. So, I mean, window film's been around a long time at this point especially dyed film, and they still, like, you can buy a cheap dyed film, it'll fade inside of six months to a year. Saved 100 on film, but total the car, not good. <laughs> Save a buck to spend a 1,000. I agree. I'm tending a friend's Honda Fit this weekend. Any tips? Yeah, I have a whole live stream on a Honda Fit. I did the full thing with the windshield. Watch that. They're, they're really not bad. There's just a lot of glass, and it's really tall. For, like, for the size of it's a small car, but the glass is like way taller than most regular sedans. So you can, I think you're fine, though, still with the 20-inch roll, but they are, they're very tall for what it is. It's a pretty simple, simple car. I was just surprised how much glass that thing has. Yeah, big quarters, big back quarters. Uh, tall doors, tall windshield too, actually. So that thing is a glorified fishbowl for sure. 19 inch, I believe it. Yeah, so you can get by with the 20. The back glass is gonna be where you save a little bit of time on all the other ones. <gasps> is it gonna work? Yay! <laughs> Jay Lopez. Now we have 10 blinks. Oh shit, it's going. And then is it gonna switch back? Is it gonna switch? Yes. We should probably add a couple more. That was cool. Jay Lopez with a $5 super sticker. Keep it up. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. <laughs> it still works. Fuck yeah. Um, any quirks with the newer Camrys? Mm, no, no, I don't think so. The, I think the back window on the newer Camrys is probably the weirdest thing, the way that it curves up at the top. It can be a little trickier to shrink, but it's you don't really have to do anything different. So, yeah, pretty straightforward. Camrys, there's like, there's a lot of uh, vehicles in that range, like, God, what is it, Toyota? Um, some Subaru without the quarters. Um, when you get into like Japanese and Korean cars, they're, they're a lot easier on side seals and stuff like that. Like usually the glass is decently thin and they're just like the tolerances on the sides are, are pretty, pretty loose and pretty straightforward. So those are great for stuff like that. Some people are suggesting do a wet line higher. I could agree with that, yeah. I think I always put mine in the middle regardless for something like that, but that's just out of habit, so. We gotta change a blade. We're gonna get started here very soon. Do we have, do we have blades? I think we have blades. Oh, I meant to look into music. God damn. So I thought of something crazy for the stream again, besides the lights. I'm like, I'm on the fence, but you guys will see when we get it. It's, uh, it's gonna be a little crazy. Those quarters are crazy on the new blazers. I've done a couple and they're pretty tight fit. 
Yep. Yep, I have one. They're, um, I found just like the Explorer quarters. It's still really tight, but if you can sneak a knife in the seal without like, you're not cutting the seal, but you're like sneaking it behind it to loosen it up a bit, that'll help. But it's still a really tight fit, yeah. They give you a little extra room on the bottom, which is nice, but yeah, it's really hard to like get it completely flush without a gap on the top. And you got like a, that whole dot matrix thing. Lo-fi beats to study slash chill to. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna play some of that like in the background and just see how it is like really low. Um, I guess stream beats was what I was gonna try because most of the other ones you can't really trust. Fucking smart ass business dude. Ah, he was so smart for coming up with that. The way that he did. Sorry, there's a, there's a dude that came out with royalty free music for streamers. It's one of the smartest business fucking plays that I've ever seen. Dude is making hand over fist with that strategy, for sure, 100%. You guys love business. So, real quick, so like, if you have music on Spotify, on Apple Music, on any of those places, you get paid per play, but it's really, really small. Well, the magic about streaming is that it goes on for hours. And then what he did was he made a bunch of tracks that were like three, three to four minutes long. And then so people just have that shit on repeat all through their stream. And it's safe to play because it's royalty free, right? And he's got licenses that you can use. Doesn't charge you anything to use it. He gets paid every time that you play one of the songs. And then he just, oh my God, he's making, he's making at least, at this point, probably thirty to $50,000 a month off of that. It's fucking brilliant. Been busy with work on your studio. Looks awesome. Congrats. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, we have been. We've been slowly adding to it. So we strung up some lights. And due to yesterday, we have a couple more coming in. But I wanted something a little bit a little bit more special other than just the blinking lights. So I have an idea. We'll try it out. We'll see, we'll see the reaction. Um, it, it probably won't be up till next week, though. All right, let's get started. <laughs> Wait. Ay! <laughs> okay. Jamie! JB with a $5 super chat starting it off. Ay! <laughs> Thanks, man. I really appreciate it. You know, it's a small thing. The blinky lights are a small thing, but I like it. Oh, shit. What happened to this? Nothing? Oh, it's closed. There we go. We don't, I don't even know if the GoPro is going to work yet. Let's mat down my hair. It's good stuff. GoPro. Jamie, no sound. Come on. What? That's ridiculous. Can only hear the super chat. What? Oh, oh, wait.
<laughs> Wait. So let me let me switch back again. Let me switch back again. Okay. God damn it. I have a wireless mic, so whenever I switch over to the GoPro, I use this wireless mic instead of the GoPro audio because it doesn't work with my software, and I forgot to turn it on on the receiver side. So now it works. Thank you so much. Jamie, flash the uh, lights flashed on Super Chat, where have I been? <laughs> that was something that we got up last stream. It's super fun. Thank you so much. I'm sorry that the audio was not working. That was super, like, I love seeing it, though. It's really cool. All right, we're going we're gonna to get back to it. Back to it. It's always something. As soon as I think that we have everything, we don't. And then you guys know how it is. Okay, so we have 5%. What I don't know... Why don't we just butcher that? I'm pretty sure we can get by with a 36 inch split and a half on something like this because these are pretty short windows for a mid sized SUV. So we're doing limo, or should we do a 24 because we got to do quarters? That's the question. This is brand new from the dealership. He just picked this up and brought it literally straight here and dropped it off with me for a few hours. So this thing is clean. Very, very clean. It's a little high. No, this should be good. Oh yeah, we're plenty. So we forgot a couple things today. I knew it was too easy. I was like, wow, I'm like on time today. What? <laughs> yes. It's definitely a 350Z. No, that was bad on titles, depending on where you're watching it. Oh, if you're watching it on Twitch. Oh, fuck. I didn't update the title. Nobody watches it on Twitch. Or my other Facebook page, I guess, is the other place. I'm really annoyed with my other Facebook page. So there's way more discovery and interaction in my own group than there is on my publicly facing tin stuff page. Stuff like that's really annoying to me. She's just locked it. Shots fired. <laughs> I love Twitch, but nobody watches this shit on Twitch. That could be because I never really tried to advertise Twitch, but I probably have something to do with it. I know that has something to do with it. But like, why? I'm on YouTube a lot more, and it just makes more sense. The only thing that it kind of screwed with is, I, it's like there's just live streams, so like if I make a video, I don't think they do what they would have done before unless it's like a silly meme video. But, to me, that's fine. I like this better. Oh, yeah, we got to turn this on. Empowering you to oh, no. Demonetize. That would be not good. Guess we gotta snap a couple of these. 
Bing. We gotta go shut that door too. Let's cut this first. I wonder if I should clean that window and use that as a glass board. Because I don't really want to walk around. But we will for this one. Because we got to shut that door anyways. We got a couple of peel boards. Um, I put them vertical though, because they made more sense for the space, but it's not exactly as functional. That was definitely a aesthetics over functionality type of thing. I would have put them sideways, but I didn't know where to put those film boxes then. So now instead of a 5% roll, we need a 20% roll because I am making the back limo over factory. And I grabs, I grabbed a 5% roll. What should we do? Should we grab that one? No. Uh, can we talk about upsell? What do you do besides heat box? That is, that is a good idea. This is not upsold, so it, I don't have a flawless system, and I'm still working on mine. Um, and it's, it's all in like, look at yourself like a solutions provider, and you're just trying to, you want to convey as much information to the customer in a nice, friendly manner without, like, I'm not a hard sell guy. I've never tried to push people into anything. <clears throat> so really, for me, if they don't get it, I'm still more than happy to tint their card in whatever film that they pick. So that being said, um, what seems to have been really effective um, for me personally is having content that they can look at. So for example, I posted literally a very basic 30 second video um, on Facebook in my group, and then I, I posted, we posted it on the page, and we're currently boosting it. The types of leads that we would generally get off of just a regular Facebook ad has not been very good, but the types of leads that we're getting from this 30-second video, um, has been has been much better. Is the audio choppy? Huh. One second. No. Stay. I sound like a robot. That's not good. Hang on. Um, 
offhand, I'm not sure. Hmm, it's popping. I'm not sure offhand, but I'm messing with a couple of, I'm c messing with a couple of things right now. I <laughs> Okay, so the audio on here is different. Well, one second. Alligator! <laughs> Fifteen dollar super chat. Holy shit! Thank you so much. Personally, when people ask for a quote, I give them all the options. Uh, then let them ask questions, and I educate them, and let them choose what they want. I don't upsell, and it increases sales incredibly. I've pretty much found out the same thing. Thank you so much for that super chat. It's uh, hugely beneficial too. So I've noticed just a few things from habits from people. So if you have content out there. So you don't have to do like some big crazy live stream. This is long form. It generally doesn't do as good on views as like a shorter, easy to digest video. So it's just like, it's really hard to explain everything over the phone. So what you wanna do is have a couple things in place that kind of explain things for you and it saves you time anyway. So when you make content about like, you know, the differences between a cheap carbon versus an expensive carbon. If you show like dyed film versus more expensive film, if you just like take the time to explain certain things. Daniel Reyna! I always like these lights, they're super fun. Daniel Reyna with a $20 super sticker, you are amazing. <laughs> Thanks, man. I really appreciate that. Um, yeah, thank you so much. It's a little dancing. What is that? Is that an avocado? It looks like an avocado or the pear. Nice. But anyways, the uh, so what you want to try and do is just have some things in place that help explain things for you and put it like in their mind. Like one thing that I, I I'm always sure to do is people derailing me right now. Tint Pro with a $5 sup, bro. Hey man, how you doing? Thank you so much for that $5 super chat. Um, yeah, we have things in place. Like, uh, I'll give a great example. Uh, I had an older convertible Mustang and like he called me. This was all over the phone. I said, I have a couple of different films. If you're interested in, some, in heat rejection, he's like, no, it's a convertible. I'll have the top down most of the time. An hour and a half later, he texts me and then he's like, how much is that carbon? Because it, between that time, I let him know that I had a couple of different options. I made him well aware that I was more than happy just to do whatever film he picked. And then, and then an hour and a half later, he was texting me because I had content about carbon. And he's like, I saw your video about the cheap carbon versus expensive carbon. So that was, that was really, really good. Okay, we're gonna get back. We're gonna do another mic test. Do another mic test. Um, does this work? Does this sound good? Hopefully it doesn't sound choppy. Maybe I'll leave this door cracked open, but I shouldn't have to. You guys will let me know if it sounds choppy. So we're on a wireless mic. Um, so I, it could have come loose. It could have just been the connection in between here and there. I don't know. But thank you guys for, for telling me about it. That always sucks because I can't really monitor my audio very much. But anyways, I really like the conversation about upsells. Um, yeah, what I found is like people will do their own research on their own time. And if you're the guy that has stuff available, not everybody's going to go for it. But there might be a few things. One, they might go with you for your entry level because you were the guy that took the time to explain the differences between a lot of films over another shop. So that already gives you some advantage. And number two is just the more that you put out there, like you're, look at yourself like a solutions provider because that's, that's what you should 
consider yourself. You're just trying to get them to pick the right solution for them. So if they value that difference, then they'll go for it. If it's within a budget. <laughs> That's also probably important a little bit. But, you know, the, the good, better, best film model, it, like, it, it goes with every industry. It's always a good one to have. And you just get some content, leave it up to them. Oh, we need the... That. Hey, <laughs> I'm making it a habit. Every time somebody super chats, I look at those lights. $20 super chat, thanks for answering my question. You are very welcome. It is a subject that I greatly like to talk about. Because it's, like, I've, I don't know, I've been on the, on the media side for so long, now I get to, I get to look at, um, the business side of it. Like, just the regular business side of it. I mean, no, not that one. Jamie! Jamie with the $20 super chat. Thanks for answering my, my upsell question. Yeah, you are very welcome on that. And now, Daniel Reyna. Holy fuck, you guys. Did it blink? It half-ass blinked. What was, what, what was with that? It like... Eh. <laughs> Technical, what the... Dang. Daniel Reyna, thank you. Holy shit. <clears throat> I might be losing my voice, guys. Jesus Christ. Daniel Reyna with a $5 super chat. Uh, but thank you so much, Jamie. Jamie, that's a huge super chat, buddy. Thank you so much. Yeah, I love to talk about this type of stuff. Type of stuff. Because there's... Like, you'll hear me run on and on about it, but, like, seriously, there's, like, I've been on the media side of things, and now I actually just get to build, like, a regular business, and I'm noticing, like, what I always try and pay attention to are patterns and, like, the, the way that people, um, like, function. <laughs> like, what made them decide to go with a particular film. What things, like I, I noticed this super early on with like Facebook messages, they turned into literally copy pasting conversations. Um, like people just wanna know the same types of things. People just have the same basic questions and then you're there to facilitate those basic things. And uh, so you, you, know, you start to notice trends and what trends are beneficial in helping out with like just raising awareness. So I took a lot of what I do with the channel in general and then like tweak some stuff for for like the business side of things just to like, you know, it's it's the same same type of principle. A lot of what I do on here is just um window tint education. And that's just like, you know, we figure out how to tint cars and we watch them get done and um the different things about the field. So it's like making that more consumer friendly because there's reasons other than money there are legitimate reasons why we like carbon and ceramic better than dyed so figuring out how to explain that to you know your average consumer who generally don't know that window film is installed you know they, they see you installing it on the outside and they're like what the hell i thought it goes on the inside right and it's not that they're stupid it's that they just they don't know, and that you you can't fault them for that. So you, as a 
as a like solution. I say solutions, um, basically like a, a, a window tint solution provider. It's like that. That's basically what you need to look at yourself like. It's like you are there to solve their problems. Hey. Um, alligator with a $5 super chat. The other thing I do is to tell people, uh, get the best film they can that includes a windshield. When you believe in it, they will get it on the whole car. That's a pretty interesting thing to say for sure. Um, one thing that I do too is I always like there, it became pretty typical for people to say full vehicle and then people just assume that means the sides and the back. But what I always say is do, are you looking to do the full windshield, like sides in the back without the full windshield? And then that puts it in their mind too, that they're all of a sudden like, oh, I didn't know I could do the full windshield. Do people do that? Can I get some more, you know what I mean? It starts a conversation there. Um, because there's just like, people have their lives and they just like, I want tint now. And then a lot of people shop without doing any research. That is a good tip though. Thank you for the super chat. I really think my voice is starting to go. <clears throat> That's not good. <laughs> I've been yelling too much. I felt it yesterday. There was something I said. It wasn't on stream. And it just like hurt my throat a little bit. I haven't lost my voice in a long time, but I'm pretty sure that's going to happen. Green scotch pads? Yeah, don't use green. The blue ones are okay, and then the white ones are okay. The blue, there's like blue scotch brights. Uh, they say glass safe. Um, you can, I found those at, at Target. I'm sure they have them at some other places too, but if, if you need to get something quickly, the blue ones are, are pretty available. This is definitely challenging to see back in here. So what are we working with? I actually haven't tinted. I haven't tinted one of these back windows yet. That's weird. Why do they do this? The def the defrosters being mobile. I don't encourage windscreens. That shouldn't have anything to do with it. I mean, if you're doing them outside, yeah, it's difficult. But that's difficult for the whole job. I hope it's not COVID. Um, I'm pretty sure I already had that. I guess I'm not 100% positive, but. No, it was, I could almost tell you when it happened yesterday. I said something like louder than I should have. It was just like, ah, and then it was like, ow. And then I, it was like, that kind of hurt. It's kind of funny though, everything, it's like, huh. Um, every, <laughs> everything kind of seems like COVID, right? But that's what's on everybody's mind. I cannot see. Do you find any difference between five and 20? Um, 
just the darkness. So like right now, um, it's going to be a little bit more challenging to cut it out on the back because it's just harder to see through. There we go, that helps. Why don't I pull the wiper? Um, it'd be helpful. I just usually don't. That's my only reason. Because they, they have this whole, like, clip thing. Sometimes those come off easily, and sometimes they're, like, a pain in the ass. Most of my habits with, like, the way that I tint things are just because I don't. That's... That's most of it. I don't think we need to go all the way up here. Amateurs. Well, you don't have to. It'll make it a little bit more challenging, but you really don't have to take it off. So it's not that big of a deal. Unless it keeps you up at night or something like that. Well, we lost that. That 9 out of 10, that cover will break the plastic tabs. That's been my... That's my impression with some of those. But it's been a long time since I even tried. And that was mostly why is like they they were really finicky to even try and pull off, and I didn't like the way that I had to pull it off. So, being that you don't have to, and it's not really that difficult to work around it, it's just like just leave it. It's risk to reward. Do I want to break this? No. What happens if I do? It'll suck. Can I get by without it? Yes. Is it gonna add any is it gonna add much time? No. Okay, well we'll just leave it. <laughs> what is this? Ew. There's like some weirdo What is that? I've never seen that. There's like some weirdo it's like silicone or something. It's all in the dots. It almost looks like old tint adhesive, but it's 100% not. So we'll take care of that, whatever that is. Even though you probably wouldn't see anything, just clean out the dots a little bit better. Weird. No, this one's literally straight from the dealership. This looks like some manufacturing process that got left on the glass up in the corners. Or on the edge. All right, that's all taken care of. Now, do we heat? We did. So let's install a door window. I guess let's get some plastic too. Shit, I gotta open that door. Where did you get that light from? Uh, it was 30 bucks from Harbor Freight. It's Braun, B-R-A-U-N. They also have the same light at Menards for like the same price. It's some, like it's, it feels really nice. It's, the light's been awesome. I was like, I bought lights that were $80. That felt cheaper than that thing, so. It's been out for at least like two or three years at this point. So, I don't know, I'm a fan. Type of tape? Oh, uh, it's called Glass Aid. 
You, at this point, you can Google it and it'll pop up. I sell it, Sun Distributing. I think Tint Depot is going to pick it up now. I tried to tell them not to in a nice, <laughs> not really, but like, it's kind of a finicky product to keep on the shelves, so. Matt got rich off of glass <laughs> Um The support from, it's a good way to sell it right now. So if you use it in the box, I suggest doing something simple and literally tinning the inside of the box. This goes with every clay bar that I've ever used. Literally put two pieces of tape on, or two pieces of tint on the inside of the box and it won't stick near as bad as what it does. Most of them stick to plastic though. It's really frustrating. But yeah, the support from the uh, the store, which is nice, because what I like so much about that, too, is I don't even have to talk about it. <laughs> like, I just put it in the description, and I just keep doing what I want to do, which is, like, tint on stream. I like doing this. This is fun. So I don't have to, like, fucking try and shove products down people's throat and, like... Slap logo. I like, I don't know. You know, it's like every little thing that I do is like, oh, by the way, blah, 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 blah. It's like, fuck that. I hate that. <laughs> I got it and it sticks to the plastic. Yeah. Unfortunately, like every clay bar that I've tried does that. Um, take it out. Um, stick a couple pieces of tint on the top and the bottom, and that'll fit it. it'll it won't stick near as bad anymore. So I apologize, but I don't have another way of making that good. And then I realized everybody does that, so it's like, well, it is what it is. We'll work on it for version two. But it's funny that Tint has a solution that's already pretty endemic to uh, to the field. <laughs> but I will, holy shit. <clears throat> wow, that sounded way fun. Um, I'll also mention, if you have a really soft clay bar and you drop it on a leather seat, it will stick. And the Glass Aid one is um, a little bit harder of a clay bar and doesn't seem to stick to stuff like that. So that's been really nice. Because that was a bad habit. I was leaving it on the seat and his howl and then it'd roll off the towel. Did I retire the crop flat out? Yeah, I nicked it really bad, unfortunately. I, I nicked it on a, a glass board um, one of those, they have really sharp edges, and I just was being dumb with it, and then I shouldn't have used it, and then I did. And then it was ruined. So, I have like four or five regular ones, and only like one or two cropped ones, so I just put the regular one back in for right now, but I still stand by the cropped ones, but if you nick it, it's pretty donezo, so... We're gonna get 
dumb close. Oh shit! <laughs> I need a siren to go off too. Twenty dollar Canadian super chat. Holy shit! We got some loonies and tunies, boys. Um. One second, I'll read it in just a second. I missed the message. I have, I, I like listened and then I didn't because I started talking. Let me finish up this right quick. Thank you so much for that though. <clears throat> yeah, we're definitely losing voice today. Flashbacks from the blazer. 100%. We did really good on that blazer, too. We did that windshield three times, and I actually learned a lot from doing it three times right in a row. That was really beneficial for me. My windshields are really, really good now. There was always something. There still sometimes is like a little something that I have to flush out. But, oh man, they're so much better than they used to be. Consistent. Very consistent. For your voice tequila and lemon with honey. I wish we could do that before it went to shit, but it's probably gonna go to shit really quickly. By the end of, by the time the customer picks it up, I'm probably gonna be like, which that's gonna be great. Where did we put it? We put it somewhere. This is looking good. Good. Have I ever had somebody not want to pay me? Not yet. But I'm sure nobody likes to pay anybody. They just do. Beyond detailing with a 20, uh, $20 Canadian super chat. Hey Matt, thanks for the videos. Uh, we use your videos for tricky vehicles once in a while in our shop. Oh, that's so cool, thanks. It's been a while since uh, I recognize your logo. Oh shit, you're, you posted, you bought the TV. That was super cool. I remember you posted in the group, you actually bought the TV. I recognize your logo. You had this super cool neon glow over at like this little seating area. I really like that. That's super cool. Thanks, man. I appreciate that a lot. I remember you from the group. Like, they, uh, they, they posted in the group saying they bought a TV so they could watch the streams while they're tinting. And I was like, aw, <laughs> that's fucking cool. I really want to get like a, a neon sign. Yeah, that's us? Awesome. Yeah, that logo, man. That's really cool. And like the purple, purple neon glow, that was super cool. That's like, ooh, I need that. Okay, this is 
This is 20, so this was for the back. Probably should use a short roll. Yeah, let's do that. And we have one. We have one here. Hello, little short roll. Come with me. So, this is probably going to be the most frustrating part of this whole thing. Which is kind of ironic, just like the cruise. When they do little quarter windows, but they do them in a certain way that makes them really tedious and time consuming, that's never fun. This is like the new Explorer quarters, except they're on the front and you're gonna have to do them way, way more often. So if you have a plotter that cuts these out well, you will definitely tint these faster than me. Point to the plotter on this one. So tack them in place there. And what we wanna do is try and free up a little bit of room on the inside. So all these are a little bit different, but sneak your blade in there. You have like a regular gasket at the bottom, so you have all the world to go down at the bottom, but these sides are just gonna be really tricky. So take your blade and just try and free up the gasket just a little bit so you can sneak it in. That way you, you don't have a gap. It's gonna be super noticeable if we have a gap on limo. So I've noticed some of them some of them free up a little bit easier than others too. So if you can't get it, then just do the best you can. But this is what I used to do on the Explorers. Yeah, there's like some residue up here too. So clean all that out. So there's a little bit of room on that backside and there's a little bit of room here So some of the most dangerous parts are, are going to be your top, top corner and that center, center edge. Get yourself a nice light. God damn. Hey, there's been so many. What is up with you guys? Ed Z, Ed Z with the, what the fuck? Ed Z with a $5 super chat. Dude, thank you so much. Followed up by Daniel Reyna, Master Tinner, the Ninja of Tinners. I have a pretty bad experience, but so good to see another master. <laughs> Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Master Tinters. We, you must study under the Master Academy. <laughs> Thanks, man. Oh, you got called out by Jaybird, though. When are we going to see channels from you guys? That's what I want to know. Tint cult. Yes. You must go like a monk temple, and then we'll have a cult-like church at the top. What do you use for a door panel cover? I've been trying to catch a live to ask. Well, you are in luck because that second part of your sentence, actually, now I feel bad. Um, they're car it's just, all it is is carpet shield from Lowe's. Um, it's really cheap, it sticks to carpet, and it doesn't leave residue on the panels. It doesn't stick to all panels. So keep that in mind. It sticks to most things, but there's some like, it still has that, you know, that panel residue issue where like, if something's been scotch guarded or, or whatever, it just doesn't, it, it won't stick.
It's been like one of the most asked questions, period, on this stream. So everybody's wondering what I'm using to cover panels, which I appreciate because that's been on everybody's mind. There's, I want to find some other stuff. Um, I, I know I say this a lot and I, I really want to find some stuff. I just always... Um, I don't know. I'm always busy and then I forget. Followed up by the handheld light. <laughs> the handheld light is from uh, Harbor, Harbor Freight. It's called Braun. I drive a... What was it? Wish I knew you did live videos, bro. I learned how to tint my first back window from watching your videos. Oh, very cool. I drive a city bus. Wish I could do live videos. Oh, that would be cool. Problem is just driving. So a lot of times it would like, it depends on your cell signal. And cell signals aren't very consistent with live streaming yet. Jay Bird and Dano should have a tin off. <laughs> Competitions are kind of funny. I think they're like, they're entertaining for a handful of people. <laughs> I want to find a glass cutting board. Um, so there's expensive ways and there's cheap ways. So I got lucky. Whatever company was here was like a house window company. So they just had them sitting in the back. And those frames over there is what I pulled them out of. Um, so that was kind of difficult and annoying, but those ones came out okay. I have a couple, uh, I have one other one that's bigger that doesn't seem to want to pop out of the frame. Oh, I hope we got this. Hang on, we're in a, we're in a pinch right now. So you can get like storm window replacements, I've been told, or you can look on like, uh, Craigslist and try and find something that seems like it'll work for you. And the other way is to call like an actual glass company. Um, but a regular flat, big flat piece of glass is actually pretty expensive, just brand new. Plus there's like, plus there's just other, other creative solutions too. Like for a little bit of time I had I still have it, um, but I have like a Civic back window. So as a glass board, because you don't need much for a glass board, really. Not unless you're going to be doing like Model 3 back windows, then you probably want to get something a little bit larger or whatever. But yeah, there's, there's a lot of creative things that you can do for a glass board. But literally just any piece of glass that you can find. Um, I gotta check this over. I gotta make sure we're we're pretty close on this quarter. It's a little a little hard to see. We're pretty tight in those edges, so we had to do a little creative squeegeeing. No, I think there's like this this little itty bitty thing on that front edge. I don't know if that's okay. I kind of want to redo it. We might redo it. I just want to take a look at it. Let me go go from the driver's seat and we'll we'll evaluate. Because it's like it's five. So if you're in a lighter film, you really wouldn't notice it. But if you're in five, oh yeah, 
no, you're fine. That's so like you you have to st struggle to see that. Okay. It's so, like, your tolerances are so tight, and it's not even like you're... It's just the way they make these. There we go. That should be good. Good deal. All my edges are covered. It's just like one of those types of things where you look at, at like, an extreme angle. We should be good on this. Oh, blazer. The the argument of like one tenor being better than the other, that's that's always like a bit of a meme too. It's like cause there used to be a lot of pissing contests in the groups. <laughs> Like, oh, you're slow, or I could tent way faster than you. It's like, who, it's, who fucking cares? Are you going to tent the, come and tent the cards for my customers? No. It's all just online arguments and stuff like that. So, like, the spirit of, like, the window film competition always needs to be in, like, in fun. It was always kind of crazy how serious some people got it, get about it. We're gonna round this one off just a little bit more. <laughs> Are cops allowed to have whatever tint that they want? Um, technically no, but they do because who's going to cite them for it? And that's the real problem. Most cops, too, they were like, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to put out a blanket statement and say all of them, but like a lot of them that I knew that would come in, they would literally say like, I'm a cop. And it's like, okay, I don't, like that's fine. But they would say, I want limo. And you'd be like, well, that's pretty dark. They'd be like, I'm a cop. <laughs> it's like, okay, that's fine. It's not that I think you're gonna get in trouble for it. It's that it's dark. So for you to drive around with it, um, it just makes things harder to see, and then they're just like, I don't care, I'm a cop. And it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm not saying you're not a good driver. Just like, at night, it's just tough to see. <laughs> These panels are great. If all panels were like this, for this plastic, this would be great, but they're not. What's the science behind cutting against the glass and not getting a scratch? So there's always a potential to, but when you use stainless steel blades and you have, and they're really sharp, um, you minimize that. So I just do it on tempered like door windows at this point and small areas on like a laminated windshield. But for the most part, um, all the cuts are like inside like this little gap area on the seals and I'll do a little bit of touching up and sometimes rounding of my corners on the actual uh, tempered glass but you always run that risk but when you have stainless blades uh, stainless steel has a similar hardness to glass which is why stainless steel is safer than regular steel or carbon steel which is a uh, harder steel that's why you get scratches in glass. So that's the that's the little science behind it.
I got my clay bars and glass aid from you. Very cool. Thanks, man. Geo and Max Pro similar? Mm, they shouldn't be at all. At least, unless Max Pro changed something. Max Pro, as far as I knew, they were sourced from like US. And they have like a couple of films that like, they have like a metalized film that Geo does not carry. How often do you wash your clay bar? Um, whenever it looks dirty. And then I don't really have a time limit for replacing them. Um, I think you could get by a oh, quite a long time with using the same clay bar. Um, it's just like, you know, look at look at it when it's new. Like you could go on for probably months uh, without having to replace it if you really want to. But it's like, it's gonna probably just build up this like discoloration and then eventually look scuzzy to the point where it's like, eh, you should probably replace it, but. It'll probably still be somewhat effective, so. Yeah, they're like, they're synthetic clay bars. They last a long time. Which I'm a big fan of. I hear metal films disturb cell phone signals. That's a, that was like an old problem. I know we have more cell signals now, but infrastructure is also better. So I don't know if you wouldn't really know until you put it on your windows and then drive around. And then if you like, and compare it to what you had before, they say that they fixed that issue with some of the more recent metal films, but it's like, problem is, is like it's an old, old problem that, that like, that's what it became known for. So it's really hard to break that stigma. So a lot of people just avoid metalized films altogether because of that. And because of that, they're also never became very popular. So people always have that, uh, that issue, that kind of like that, you know, oh, that's what I heard. And then other people hear it and then, oh yeah, that's what I heard too. So it just kind of like keeps going. What do you use a clay bar for? Uh, cleaning. So it's really handy um, at cleaning top edges, picking up little extra specks um, and rear defrosters, it's kind of unreal. Um, on back windows. So we'll try on this one. Some of them have like, there's a lot of back windows that have like this black residue. And I don't exactly know what it is, but clay bars clean the shit out of it. So they've been really, really helpful. And other people have find, found them really, really helpful as well. It's one of those like, I don't know how they stayed so low key for so long. It was just one of those things that most people didn't think to try. And if they did try it, they sure as hell didn't make it public. <laughs> Until I got my hands on one and I was like, what the fuck? This is kind of unreal. Good shit. It's always fun to find something like that too. We're still learning. So we can try it really quick. So this is what it looks like now. They're meant to strip dirt on paint. Yeah, but I just like, so it depends on the defroster. These ones don't look, these actually look really light color. So there's probably not gonna be anything that pulls off. So while we're having this discussion. Oh, no, there is. It's not heavy on this one, but like, we'll give this one a, a quick scrub, right? So this is like, so this is like mostly white right now. It's not like super white, but we'll just go over this really quick. This is a brand new factory back window. And it's just one of those simple things, like literally just soapy water. It's really endemic to what you do. 
And now see this darker, like where I pressed in harder and stuff like that? It's definitely pulling some shit off the back window. Now, what's really kind of freaky is if you scrub it with a scrub pad or anything else, and then you use a clay bar, you'll feel like it was clean with a scrub pad, but then you go over it with a clay bar, and then it's still pulling shit off, and you're like, what the fuck? So, it's been cool. I think it helps with some of the rear defroster issues too. It doesn't fix it entirely, but it definitely helps. Are we still going okay on the GoPro? Oh, it's actually not bad. Good shit. So yeah, same thing for top edges. This is brand new too, so Probably not going to be that bad, especially when it's tempered. When you have laminated front doors, there's a lot of dirt that can sit in between. But I'll give it a quick rub, and you see these really dark marks? That's shit that it pulled off of the top edge. So now you have this slurry. So one thing that I'm doing now is I'll take a rag, and I'll just wipe that slurry off of it. So um, really, really effective for cleaning all that shit off of there. Wow, this is a... This is a wiggly back window. Hey, bears work good on older cars? As far as I can tell, they work good on everything. Edge close. Thinking about redoing that quarter? <laughs> How did you know? I still do, a little bit. I like justified it, and I'm not wrong, but it's one of those things that it's like, oh God, we can make it better. And when we can make it better, I feel like we should. Let me do the drivers first and not freak out about it so much. And then we'll we'll address the the other side. There's like a very slight, it's, but it's like, man, it's like when you really get down there at a particular angle and it's like, 
take it off, make the pattern on glass board. In theory, that should work fine. But in practice, that never works out as precise as what I'd like to. For bigger tolerances, that's what I'll do. But sometimes it's just like, I, man, it always seems like it changes. <laughs> But we got we got plenty of we got plenty of time with this one, so we'll just that being said, we might as well. And it's limo. So you want that shit to look got him. That's what happens. <laughs> it like I struggle a little bit because it's like fighting with the day-to-day -day in like a high production environment and then coming to here. So it's like, I'll go, I'll go easily a little overboard in this place, more than what I'd say I need to. Because I do a lot of cars. And I just, I'll tell you, I don't have the time Outside, like when I'm out of here, I do way more cars in, at that glass shop right now. Um, so I just built up that, um, you know, it's just that, that type of workflow where it's like if you have a little issue, it's like generally speaking, you're, there's always going to be something that you're not super happy about. But it's like you don't have the time to care because... You know, they give you a couple hours on a car, and then you, you got to move on. So you do the best you can with the time that you have. <laughs> what do we got? Spenny, penny stock advertisements? Oh, my God. Hang on. I, oh, wait. Let me close this. The, I always laugh because I looked a lot into the stock market and I, I played around with penny stocks for a while. <laughs> Whenever people say, guys, get on this hype train, it's going to go up. It's like, that's the news. You got to be there before people are like, yelling and advertising that news or else you already basically missed the train that's always funny coffee good stuff maybe the coffee ruined my voice did you switch from baby shampoo to dish soap no uh oh hang on Hello, Detroit Tint Studio. Oh, God. I'm getting this weird call from like, hello, please don't hang up. We've called several times to verify your business with Google. And I feel like that's illegitimate. It's like Google, Google fucking email me or notify me on my business profile. Why the fuck would they have just a regular robot system call me? I don't, I don't buy that shit. Quiet. So I thought it was a potential customer. It's not. <laughs> it's uh, unfortunate spam. He needs to stop picking up. I get plenty of spam calls, but like what I'm new to is business spam calls. And it's like, I could see how people would see that is very legitimate. Or just like, I had a random dude call me and he was like, oh, well, you can pay for this to help boost your uh, listings on Google, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, I don't know about that. Maybe. Bye. 
Remember when we bought small trash cans for the home studio? I'm sad. I should have got bigger ones. They were great for the home studio. Scammer? Probably. But it's like a robot one, which is really annoying. So it's like called me like five times already. And it's like, hello, please don't hang up. Click. Do we have penny stock scam going on? Is that is that what's going on? I might have to block, block somebody. Yeah, as soon as you say don't hang up, it's when I hang up. But the thing is, too, what really worries me is, like, I'm pretty sensitive to, like, spam calls and stuff like that. And then, like, some of them are just like, God, is that legitimate? And if I'm like, God, is that legitimate? Then it's like, I can only imagine how many people are like, oh, okay, sure, that sounds great. That's scary. Ever see Kit Boga on Twitch? Holy fuck. Some of those are great, but. Some of those are pretty fucking ridiculous, too. Oh my god. Is that really? So this is the bevel, and then this, like. Ooh, this is nice. We like when that happens. That's real close. Hell oh, yeah. Now just stay right there, pattern. Don't go anywhere. Let that sit for a sec. Is this a five? Yeah. Yeah, this is one of those I got five on it. Oh, that was bad. <laughs> um, we're doing five on the front doors and then 20 on the back factory to match the front. So the whole thing's gonna be pretty similar, which would be cool because we get to actually see how close it's going to be. Generally speaking, if you do 20 on the front, or 20 on the back, 5 on the front, it's going to be a real close match. Did your lights go off? Yeah, they've gone off consistently with everything. What? Who was that? Yeah, the lights have been great. I think the only time it freaked out was when like three people super chatted all at like the same time. And then it like, <laughs> it half broke. So we had to reset it. But that, I don't expect that. <laughs> I'm going, I'm so going back and forth on, on my idea. I, so I have some stuff ordered. I had this idea. Oh, we should have left it for the quarter. Damn. Yeah, they did a good job, though. Um, I have, like, a really...
Whoa, wait. Did I miss it? Oh, is it I missed this one? Oh shit, I think I missed yours. No, it definitely would have. I just must have been, oh, I wonder if that was when I got that phone call. <gasps> that was when I got that phone call. What the fuck? Oh, spammers ruined my life. Dude, I am so sorry. They would have definitely flashed. But here, oh God, I need to. No, what is it? I can replay it, but it's not going to make the lights flash. <sighs> well, the thing is, you got you to gotta time it a little bit, too. So if I'm, like, distracted on this side, they will flash. But if, like, shit's going on and, like, it's, best time is when I'm here, for sure. But sometimes there's only so much I can do to try and catch it. But I will replay the alert. The, the lights are triggered a different way. I want to I wanna replay the alert because I missed the alert, and that's half the fun. So I can't do anything on the lights right now, but if there's another one, they'll go off. Don't worry. But... Ryan! There we go. So we got the play. That's what I wanted to do. No, it's all good. Um, so anyways, what was... Uh, yeah, there was literally a scammer at that time. Oh, that was <laughs> that was super annoying. I'm really sorry about that. Can you meter the back? Uh, what is it? What is it? It's pro. You're probably right. It's probably four percent. Um, but it'll be really close when it tacks up a little bit more. I might roll it back down. But so we can close this a little bit. And we can peer through and see. That to me is very, very, very close. That looks good. What? Are those green Nike glasses? <laughs> they are. I got some new glasses. So they're actually, uh, they're transitions. Um, we got them off of like Glasses USA. They weren't, what? Robot voice again? Yeah. Audio choppy. Why? This doesn't make any sense. Huh. What the fuck is going on? That's like a weird problem to have because it's really inconsistent. Let me go back. Is it okay now? Hello? Check, check. I gotta wait for the delay to clear. So it's weird. It's when I, it's when I switch then. No? No what? I need more. Is it okay now? Well, the, so the thing is, like I said, I'm on a wireless mic, but it should be, when I switch from the desktop back to the wireless, it shouldn't be choppy, but it's weird that it inconsistently is choppy right now. That's kind of fucked. All right, we're clearing some space. Is this still choppy right now? God, I hate repeating myself like that, but. It shouldn't be. better now it also a possibility is is bumping it 
Okay, thank you guys. Now, now I got a bunch of people telling me. Sweet. It's also po possible I'm bumping it, so I'll look at the at the VOD afterwards, and I'll I'll try and figure out what's going on. Dang, I'm really upset. The spam caller ruined the super chat. That's like, that's the worst. If you want to talk about some, some shit, like, it's bad enough that they waste your time, but to mess up a super chat? Oh boy. So, oh yeah, what I was saying with the, uh, with the glasses. <laughs> yeah, I got uh, different glasses. We ordered them off offline. My wife needed some new ones. And I have, I got two pairs of glasses from the Philippines. And man, if you ever need glasses, fucking go to the Philippines. You can get like a brand new pair of glasses for like 50 bucks. Um, but off this site, they're like 150 depending on what you get, which isn't too bad. Because usually in store, there'll be like 300, depending on how many features you want, and that's always super ridiculous. But anyways, I've always wanted to do transitions, but I've heard that they're not that great. And then I was like, fuck it, I'll get, because it's a big commitment, right? It's like, okay, you get these glasses, you wear them all the time, and if you don't like it, well, then you're kind of fucked. But, no, tran transitions are actually... Transitions are actually awesome. I'm a big fan. So I have... And it's like, I tint. So it's like, why would I not have glasses that tint? <laughs> it's what I do. Put this back. This little piece. All right. Let's hope this one goes smoothly. I see people with transitions as pole bearers. What? Why? How much soap do you add? Um, yeah, rule of thumb is one ounce per gallon. I do both baby shampoo and Dawn. A little bit, like three quarters Dawn, one quarter baby shampoo. It works out pretty well, but that's for this film. Play around with it. Start out with like one ounce per gallon. Oh, this looks good. Oh, this is like, hang on. Actually, I don't want to, I don't want to say anything yet. <laughs> Need more info on plastic. Guys, I think at this point I could become a plastic wrap company. What the fuck? <laughs> Carpet Shields from Lowe's. Can we get a sponsorship from Lowe's? Honestly, what the fuck? <laughs> Transitions don't work in the car? Yeah, because they're uh, UV. So you know your glass is doing what it's supposed to when your Transitions glasses don't work in the car. <laughs> they're uh, 99. Like, yeah, so whenever you go out in sunlight. It's a great UV demonstration, though. which oddly might get them to pay for themselves. Ah, oh, this is fucking perfect now. We have to redo the other one. There is no gap. Fuck me. We gotta go redo the other one. We will not settle. We got this thing spot on and it's limo. 
So we have a very s super slight little teeny tiny annoying thing on the front edge where you wouldn't see it unless you get down low or unless I announce it on stream. Flat out blade, yes. Yeah, for my main squeegee, for the little cropped one, it's a, or for the little cut down, it's an orange crush. So we have a very slight gap here. So it's like, this hurts. Cause this is actually a really good window and this is hard to tint. They need to make transition windows. They do for film. Um, the problem is it, it just doesn't, it doesn't work. Not long term anyways. Not yet. It'll get better as time goes on. So what happens is like, there's, there's quite a few different ones right now. There's one called Photosync. They charge they charge, get this, they charge fucking $2,500 for a roll of that shit. And I know a shop that bought it, and three months later, three months later that shit was failing. Like it was spotting. And it's like, how the fuck do you have a company selling $2,500 per roll, and that shit, you didn't even put that on your car for more than three months? Fuck off. That's ridiculous. And that's in Michigan. We are fixing a quarter. That is whack. It wasn't even a big change too at the time. So it was like you're you're talking like twenty no, thirty-five percent to like fifty percent or something like that. Alright, where's my light boys? Where'd we where'd we do with it? Fuck. It was there. Oh, did we put it on the bar? I think we put it we put it on the bar. Um, what should one charge for two front windows? Whatever you want to make on your two front windows. A good way to find out kind of like a, a happy medium is to call around and see what other people are doing, but don't, don't feel like you have to copy everybody. That'll give you a gauge on what most people are shopping around, hearing. And don't be the dude that just undercuts everybody by five dollars, because that's kind of a stick move, bro. <laughs> What's your normal charge for two front windows? <laughs> well played. Uh, I start at 100. Depends on the film that you want to get. But front doors start at 100. We have, uh, we have something scheduled for Saturday just for two front doors. We have a 2021 Ram that's getting... What's it getting? Uh, two front doors in carbon uh, for... Um, one thirty. Oh, we're at the end. No. Oh. Oh. Of course we screwed it. We gotta change this roll.
I would like to put one of those rolls here, but I, I don't know what. I don't know how to do that. All right, let's do, let's... A 2021 Ram? No, 2021 Rams are, as far as I know, they're okay. Uh, the Durango is the one that's got the, the module where you have to pull the seal. And it's really easy to do that, so, thankfully. I hope not on the Rams. Find out the hard way. We got the back window to do, and we still got uh, the rear quarters to do, along with this one. What on the 2021 Durango? Uh, I found out the hard way. Um, so be careful. They put a, uh, a, <laughs> a computer that controls a lot of shit, they put it in the door. So what you're going to see is a lot of people posting about the 2021 Durangos now. So literally here, behind this panel, not on this car, on a 2021 Durango, there's a module. There's a speaker up here. There's wires that literally run down to that module. That module controls the mirrors, blinkers, a whole bunch of shit is tied into that little computer. So if you do not pull the seal, Water will run straight down those wires and fuck that computer hard. No good. Hey guys, we fixed it. We have no gap. I feel better. <laughs> good choice. That wasn't too hard either. You have to be really careful on your cut though. Yeah, so be really careful. So if you want to pull them out, um, this has been known for a while. They pull out the same way. Literally, it's no joke. There's a screw here if you want to take it out, but like pop, pop the seal back, pull out the seal, keep the, like roll down the window, pull this back, pop out the seal. All that water isn't going to run down this way. It's just going to go straight down and then you'll be fine. If you're not sure if it's the 20 Durango or the 21 Durango, just pull it. Just just start pulling them on the Durangos. I don't advocate for pulling seals, but if it's 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 risk to reward. It's super easy to do and it's you're you're not going to break it, so just do it. Do you have a plan for all the plastic waste? <laughs> no, no, sorry. We're window tinners are super uneco friendly. We're not intentionally. It's just part of the field because it's like we have plastic liners and then we have plastic film. And then if we wreck patterns, that's all shit that goes in the trash. And then we have plastic cores. Like we're fucking hardcore fuck the environment people. <laughs> not intentionally, but it's just how it is. <laughs> that's actually a really good question. Where do you get the protective wrap? How many times is that today? Is that like three times? Oh man, I need to put like some broad form PSA. It's carpet shield from Lowe's. Here we have heavy taxes on plastic. Then just charge more for your tint jobs. If it's more, if it costs more expensive business wise, then just charge more accordingly. But yeah, it's just kind of funny. Unfortunately, that's just single use plastics and all that shit. It's like, uh oh. 
We gotta swap his battery. We got the back three to do, and then we'll be all set. We did a much better job on that quarter, and by much better, I mean like, so now there's no gaps. How can I get my hands on the film that you use? Uh, contact Geo, Geo Shield. Oh God, this GoPro battery is getting fucked. GeoShield USA or just Google GeoShield, you'll find them. Your loyal fans know damn near everything you use. I know, but there's always like people, like we're sitting at, oh wow, cool. We're sitting at 140 right now. That's like 140 people, people bouncing in and out the whole time. Average view duration is like 10 minutes, so. It just comes with the territory. It's just really funny how often that question pops up. Does it have to be a big order? No. No, you, you, can, uh, you can order smaller quantities and stuff like that. Like, they just want to talk to you, really, like set up an account. What they want to do is they want to make sure that you're, like, you want to be a legitimate business. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you, like... They're not just retail film that they sell on retail websites. So it just like most businesses go through distributors and stuff like that. So how do you get slimy stuff off top windows? Uh, I don't know. Razor blades, clay bars, that good stuff. It's not a question of increasing the prices since we are on a tiny island. The government has enforced laws and bans on single-use plastic, so in the future, it will be hectic for business. Ooh, that's rough then. I don't have a good answer for that one. That's just... Some, some countries are better for certain businesses than others. Paintless dent repair might be good? <laughs> I don't Huh. So what do we do? We should probably use a 24 inch roll. Oh fuck. Where's my guys? We found it. Oh, we hung it up. Okay. I was gonna say, where's my where's my dress? I forgot to put this on the glass. I remembered. I was like, I need to do that. And then I didn't. This should have been, this should have been on the glass much earlier. I love how far your garage has been. Never seen anything like it. Thank you. Yeah, it's actually, it's been interesting. So I didn't, I, it's just the big open chaotic space, but this, this whole like overhead diffuser that helps with the lighting, that's been, uh, that was a fun project. And then we do silly things like we put RGB strips behind film boxes because <laughs> why not? I like the new Blazers. I think they're a little slim on what they offer at certain price points. So the the whole like setup there is like a it's a, it's a little basic for certain things, but uh, I really like the styling on them, especially in white. White and black is fucking. It looks sick. <laughs> How's the waiting area? It's the same. I haven't done a damn thing to it yet. 
Most people like, okay, so I have like a handful of people that wait there, but it's not for very long and I don't have people walking in and out. So I guess instead of making it like a showroom, I should just make it like a chill room. Because it's it's like the way that I like to run is like, I, I still got to get a sign on my door. So I, I don't know what to do about it, and I don't want to spend a bunch of money on it, especially right now, because it's just... It's, it wouldn't really matter a whole lot. I think what matters the most is the most outward facing part of the business, and that's so far the stream. And any sort of like external marketing. People like dropping their cars off or they're like sitting on the couch and, and it's like. No! Damn it. Somebody is so right right now. You caught me. Thank you. Somebody in chat deserves deserves a lot. <laughs> they just saved me on this whole back. They asked, are you using 20 on the back or are you using 5? We're making it 5, but we grabbed 5 instead of 20 because we got distracted. You are so right, sir. That is one of those easy slip-ups that can cost you too much. Super chat. Is there a super chat? Why are my lights not blinking? Kevin, save the day. Thank you, Kevin. I appreciate it. Yeah, that would suck to put five on the back. And then, <laughs> and then you like shut the doors and you look and you're like, fuck me. Yeah, we got to do 20. Perfect. See, it's a, you notice a lot of it for me just, it turns into just, like I don't really think a lot about what I'm doing. I just do it. So that's like, that's one reason I can do the streams. It's just been tending for a while. That's because of the glass aid. That's why it caught my eye. Oh, cool. Thanks, man. Yeah, it's just, you like, I run on autopilot for a lot of the actual tinting. And most of the time, it's like, just do 20 all the way around. But when you get into, like, for me, I've noticed most of my mistakes are on, like, some of the simple, simple hiccups, right? Where it's just, like, uh, something I don't normally do. So it's, like, 5 on the front and 20 on the back. That's not something I normally do. Normally, I do 20 on the front and 5 on the back. But because this is factory tinted, that's where we have to change things up a little bit. So this is what we were, and then this is what we need. So thank you. Good shit. And we'll just leave that there. Like we're going to use it, but we know we never are going to use it. So same with this. Uh, just get rid of it. What type of tape? Uh, it's called Glass Aid. At this point, just Google it. You'll see me use it on a bunch of live streams. I cut on it. It's thick, so it keeps the glass safe. And you can find it really easily that way. All right, there's definitely something up here.
I had to make sure. Yes, we did do 20. <laughs> I had to make sure that it. I really did 20 on the back. I know I grabbed a different roll, but I just wanted to make sure they look the same. Thank God. What do you think about outside tinning? Uh, I think that you're you're creating more problems for yourself than you need. Oh, there's some weird like silicone residue up here, or like I'm just I don't know. There's something up here. Because you're like. It's not like just remote starts or other accessories and stuff like that. It's like tint. It's like painting a car. You can tint outside, but it's just you're you're making a lot of things more difficult for yourself. So why? It's like people go from I don't. I don't have a garage, so I guess I have to tint at other people's houses and outside. And it's like, that's that's not true. Partner up with other established places, offer tint. Especially in the beginning, you're just creating a lot of issues for yourself. It's going to make it way harder, and then you're not going to have much of a successful business most of the time. It's crap in the air, it's wind, it's elements, it's sunshine, it's rain. You're dependent on, oh, hey, I can tint this if the weather's good. You don't want your business to be dependent on good weather. I guess kind of like snow plowing, right? If it doesn't snow, you're not making money. That sucks. And it's seasonal. Window tint's more year-round. It slows slows down some in the winter, but it definitely doesn't stop. So, but if I was tinning outside, I've I've seen it firsthand in Michigan. I worked with I worked with a guy who was determined. Um, he had a tent. I have no garage, I would never do it business-wise. Yeah, same here. So I, I like legitimately worked with a guy who would take a tent around and he had a propane heater, he had the whole setup, he could make it work. Um, but it was just like, you're talking like 15 minutes to set up every time you, you run around. It just gets like, so you're adding a half an hour at least, and then you gotta like plug in all your shit. And then it's just like, ugh, it's just, you get frustrated with it, you get burnt out of it. People, <laughs> people aren't paying you more for you to tint their car in a tent. Now he owns a shop and a distribution company, and he's doing much better for himself, so. Gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah, and he did for a time, but he definitely worked his way out of it. He didn't, like, that's not, that's not a long-term solution. That's like, hey, things are slow. Um, Things are slow, what can I do right now? And that's like, but that's that's like a hopping off point. That's, that's not a long-term solution, so. Hello, Detroit Tint Studio. Yeah, sure, what type of vehicle do you have? Okay, you looking for just the front doors or you want to do like the sides and the back? Right. So what they do on the what they typically do on the back is 20%. So that's on a lot of trucks and SUVs. 
Um, I actually have a, a 2021 20, Blazer in right now that I'm doing. Um, I'll have pictures up later on our Facebook page. Um, but we're doing 20% over the factory right now, and that brings the back down to like limo, uh, 5%, so it's gonna be like much more private in the back. And then we're doing five on, on like the front doors. So uh, the, uh, as far as pricing, yeah, it would be more expensive. So front doors start at 100, and then the full uh, Grand Cherokee would start at 260 for the sides in the back. So another way to do it too is like you could do front doors and like tint your windshield lighter and that would help give the whole vehicle a darker appearance too. Um, but that's entirely up to you. Um, I think I have some availability on Saturday. Actually, later this afternoon too. I honestly didn't think so either, but <laughs> I actually do have an opening later on. Um, it depends on the person. Uh, I have a waiting area if you want to wait. It takes, uh, any on a Grand Cherokee, it'll take two and a half to like three and a half hours. Um, so I have a waiting room if you want to chill. It's got Wi-Fi. Um, or you can just drop it off. That's completely up to you. Um, but yeah, we can absolutely schedule you for next week if you're interested. Um. Okay, yeah, what time, uh, what time would you want to drop it off? I open up at 9, but I could be here even a little earlier if you need me to be. Not 9 a.m. on Monday. Yeah, let me check my schedule really quick. 9 a.m. on Monday should work great, though. I just want to make sure that I didn't have another overlapping appointment. I know I got one on this Saturday. What's today? Next Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. No, Monday's Monday's all good. Um, what's your name? Okay. Um. Okay, and then um, can I get an email address? Because uh, there's, so I got to take a deposit to hold the spot. Um, so I can do this one of two ways. Either I can sell you a PayPal request um, for the deposit, and that goes straight towards the balance of the full job, so no worries there. It's just to hold the spot. Um, or we can take it over Cash App or Venmo. Mm. Okay, what's your email? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. All righty. I got you down. Um, so at, right after I hang up, I will shoot that over to you. You can also text this number, too, so I'll send you a couple of follow-up texts. Um, and then you will be all set for 9 a.m. on Monday for your Grand Cherokee. All righty, man. Thank you for calling. Yep. See ya. Hey, boys. Boys, we got a, we got probably a, a full Grand Cherokee for Monday, which is awesome. Super nice dude. That was a nice conversation. He wants to get a Grand Cherokee. He wants to do the dark back. He wants to do the back darker. And then he also wants to do uh, like the front doors with the, like the full thing. Yeah, the full, th the full thing minus the windshield. That's what I'm trying to say. So I'm trying to send him um, a deposit request. But that's kind of how I book jobs. Like I don't say much more than that. And sometimes I stumble over my words and stuff. But generally speaking, if somebody's really interested and they want to get done soon, that's how most of them go. Um, 
Okay. Okay, sorry. So that was this number. Okay, so... Sorry, there's more things. Oh! Blinkies. Jamie! Jamie with a $5 super chat. Thank you so much. Pink got it as finest. I'm glad that worked out. That was super cool. I always love when I have something to, like, look forward to this. We have another stream coming up, so that's cool. Request. Um, Mr. How much of a deposit? I usually just do 40. Um. Hopefully this works. I just like the sound of that supercharger. That's cool. I'm glad you like it. All right, come on, come on. Please work. This didn't work for me before. Oh, it worked. Oh, thank God. Because we had a problem with it with another guy. I wasn't sending a request. I don't know why. Okay, so let me send him a follow-up text. Just letting him know that I sent it. Cool. All right, let's finish this up. The, uh, the client messaged me and asked if this is going to be done, going to be done inside, inside of an hour because I think we've been taking, no, what is it? We started at 10, 11, 12. We're coming up to one. So, okay. So we're not doing bad. I sold them two to three hours. So we're like riding that, that limit. So we'll wrap this one up. I told him about a half an hour it'll be all set, and then we'll be all good to go. He was just asking if it would be done in an hour. But I know we have lollygagged a little bit with some of the things. How do we do this? Is this where everything goes bad? So if you have a spoiler, the way I like to cut these out is put a little slit right in that groove and then pull it back out and then I make a, this relief cut here. And then we put it back down and then we follow that groove. up this way because there's always this little bit of leeway in between that spoiler and the top of the glass so i think we're ooh, we're a little shy on that side so let's adjust it so just get it close a little bit low on that side now That way you don't have to like remove a spoiler anything. We should probably trim this up a little bit more. I thought we were at the top. We're a little bit low. Let's do this again. We'll definitely make sure all our stuff is covered. So this goes with basically like Grand Caravan, Focus Hatch, like anything that's got a back spoiler like that. This is how I do them. So you make like a little side cut and then you have to make like a relief cut and then that way you kind of like tuck it up into that top edge 
as you're cutting. And it all just lays down real clean and try not to just bunch it up. So you're cutting right in between the glass and the spoiler, so you're not like riding the paint or anything like that. So that's not going to give you, that's going to make sure your glass is covered. That doesn't necessarily make sure that this is going to line up perfectly on the inside. That just depends on the way that the spoiler is cut out or like that. So I'm going to lower it just a little bit. It's a little tricky because we're messing with dryer sheets. It's this would be easier to slide around if the whole thing was wet, but it's not. Okay. So we're going to cut off some of this extra down here, and then we're going to raise the whole thing and make sure all our edges are covered. And then we're going to shrink it, cut it, and install it. We might have a little bit of trimming to do on that top edge on the inside. So this is the most important. You got a lot of room too. So you can overlap that film up here, trim it on the inside and heat it down. So you'd be completely fine doing that. Number of ways to do this back window. Heat gun. Let me check my Okay, so that's good. No, no. No, no. All right, we'll check on that later. We'll check on that later. I like not taking things apart. I'm on that same boat. I take apart stuff when it absolutely needs to be, but that definitely means that I'm not the best at doing that when I need to. Not a lot of shrinking to this one, huh? Is it Crown Vic hard? Crown Vicks are super annoying, yeah. You can pull the seals. That is actually one of the few vehicles, too, that I would pull the seals for. They're really low, though. Back windows are super curved. So we're definitely overlapped a little bit on this top, which is cool. So we'll cut these corners and then we'll leave that center alone. We'll trim that off on the inside. Not a lot of shrinking on this one. But you got a lot of room to work with on the inside. with a $5 super chat. Wrapping the wire around the wiper is worth its own super chat. Thanks, man. 
Yeah, I figured since you're already kind of pulling it away, you just kind of like lift it, shrink underneath it, lay it back down. That's why I don't feel the need to really take them off. There's very few that get in, in, in the way in such a way that it's just like makes it impossible to like pull it back and shrink it. Unfortunately, a lot of domestic vehicles don't just prop up, but that's just, on some of them too, you can take like a shank and you can wedge it in there. I learned that from you and it's life changing. Damn. That's heavy, bro. <laughs> there was a really cool one that I picked up from a guy too. It was like with the, on certain ones, it doesn't work with, with all of them, but ones that are separated, sometimes you can take a shank and shove it in there or just like a, you know, a slim plastic tool. And that's pretty, that's pretty handy too. Polish up those edges a little bit. So we did the quarters. We fixed the front quarters. The doors are all done. And now we just gotta wrap this guy up. Pretty good. All right, so this will line up decently well on the inside. So we can fix these. So the top edge, like we said, top edge is gonna be a little bit overlapped when we get to the inside. And then we'll just trim it off on the inside. We'll probably have a little bit to touch up. There's just a, Spoiler comes down a little low, so it's gonna be a little tricky to cut it out. So there's that. This guy, I know we did this earlier, but second time doesn't hurt. Cool. Well, I wish we had something scheduled for Saturday. We do have front doors, but we still have a few days. Monday. There's a pretty, there's a pretty encouraging phone call about a Grand Cherokee for Monday, so that would be nice. I don't want to go more than like a few days, three to four days without a live stream. They, they're too fun. Anybody ever had curly film? Doing that really is annoying. Have you ever had that where you peel the roll and the whole thing just wants to like spiral in on itself? God, that used that would drive me absolutely crazy.
We got some serious dude love going on in the chat. <laughs> right there. Yep. So get this overlapping on the spoiler just a little bit right there. And then we can trim that off. Make sure all our gaps are covered. This is another thing. You like get it all squeegeed and then you like look up here and you see this little sliver of a gap there and you're like, fuck. So that little guy, now we might have a little finger or something pop up. Let's pull this out of there. Cool, we recovered it. Wouldn't surprise me if a little guy pops up. That's typically what happens if you do something like that. Real easy to shrink out though. Especially because everything's swooped down. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Gotta go. See you next stream. See you next storm. Or see you next stream. Thank you, Jamie. I appreciate it. Thank you for also mentioning your name so I knew who it was. <laughs> That's actually super helpful right now. Thanks, bro. Thanks for hanging out. We're almost done anyways, so much appreciate all the support. Okay, so we're basically done. We're gonna just go around this whole dealy, double check. Okay. Um. Okay, um, oh, we can take glass cleaner. That's nice. Okay, we got a little, a couple little guys right here. <laughs> Bye, bromance. <laughs> Later. God damn it. The things we do for the stream. That looks good. These will look. Factory, tinning over factory tinted glass makes life easier. And as far as like speckles and stuff, because when you sandwich it in between film, you really don't see it very much. Uh oh. Hello, Detroit Tin Studio. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, actually, I could get that done. I'm just wrapping up a blazer, so um, if you want to swing in in probably the next half hour. Okay, um, well, 
I will be able to get on it in probably about a half hour. So is that cool? Okay, no problem. Um, just a heads up, we're located on the back corner of the building, uh, unit 108. We, yeah, so we need to still put a sign up there, but I'll have it. It'll be unlocked so you can just come on in. Alrighty, we'll see you soon. All right, thank you. Yep. Damn, this looks good. All right, I got another, I, got, I guess I got a windshield strip and one door coming in. So we're gonna have to wrap things up pretty quickly here, but this is, uh, this looks good. Ooh, that's clean now. Blazer, you need to tuck in your seals. No gaps? Hell yeah, that looks good. All right, well, it looks like we are all good on this one. Dope. All right, let me take a couple of pictures, and then I got a guy coming in. Um, and then, yeah, things are gonna get a little hectic for me. So, are the keys in it? I guess so. They are. Good deal. Don't stick. Picture time. No. We need this out of the way. It looks really good. So what we ended up doing, oh my God. So it's dark gray and we did five on the front and 20 on the back and so it all matches together. Dude, this looks sick. I like the dark gray. Black wheels. Ooh. This might get pulled over pretty quickly. All right. Go back a little more. And then. This looks good, this looks really good. They do little things like black out the grill, black out the emblem. Damn. Good shit. Did you tint the waiting room? No. No, we haven't. Okay. So we gotta, we gotta open this back up. Yeah, I just leave it off. If I'm not expecting anybody, I just leave this stuff off. So. Stay live? No, we're gonna have to hop off stream. Ugh, I got too many things to juggle now. I got this guy coming to pick it up. I got the other one that I gotta handle. He's probably gonna be waiting. Um, all right, so we are at the end of the stream. I just got a couple of things, businessy things that I gotta do then. So I gotta type this guy up. I gotta check in somebody else as soon as they come here. I gotta cash this guy out. It's just, it's gonna be too much to juggle around right now. So this was also a very, very good stream. Um, next one, probably Saturday. I just don't have a confirmed appointment yet. If not, then hopefully Monday. And then, um, yeah, we're doing good. So I had an unexpected phone call for like a windshield strip and a door. So I had to do stuff like check in with home and whatnot as well. So, all right. Um, so thank you to all the super chats. This was a big one today.
This is a very big one. Wow, holy shit. Okay, so huge shout out to Jay Lopez, Jamie, Jamie, Alligator, Daniel, Tint, uh, Tint Pro, Jamie, Daniel, Alligator, Beyond Detailing, uh, Ed Z, Daniel, Ryan, Jamie, Alligator, and Jamie. Thank you all for the support. I really appreciate it. We have some more fun stuff on the way with super chatting. Uh, hopefully it'll be cool. And thank you to everybody that just hung out. If you guys had fun, um, subscribe and, and turn on notifications for the next one. Also, we have a Facebook group. Uh, let me type that in. Dot com slash groups slash internet. Join the Facebook group. It's a good place. We have a bunch of people. So if you have other questions you didn't get answered or you need to take pictures or show, show off your work or whatever, go to the Facebook group. Um, but yeah, this looks good. So I got some work to do. Thank you all for hanging out, and I will see you in the next one. Bye. We might have a full Malibu on Saturday for carbon. So maybe, I don't know. We're waiting on deposit. Bye.